everyone. Welcome to the Park Scope Unprofessional Podcast Hour. My name is Joe. Joining me tonight uh, will be maybe Lane. I don't know. He's currently having computer troubles. But we wanted to start off uh, the episode because, I don't know, we're 15 minutes late and I don't want to keep people waiting. Also joining us tonight is our very special guest, a uh, friend from Attractions the Show, Mr. Banks Lee. Banks, how are you doing? I'm great, Joe. How about you? I'm hanging in there. It's been yeah. it's been a, a crazy past few weeks, and it just mm. feels like I just feel like I hit the wall today. So, <laughs> yay! Well, right? Well, you don't need to get in here. So, yeah. Um, so let's start off real quick. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot of the Christmas uh, offerings uh, in the parks this uh, episode, but we're going to start off with some little bit of news. Uh, well, uh, we n- 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 I can't even speak right now, man. Oh. <laughs> you see, this is the problem when you go live. You just <sighs> whatever. Anyway. Um, <laughs> WFTV reports that uh, permits have been filed for Diagon Alley. Not Diagon Alley. <laughs> you see, man. Wow, we're real late on that news. Uh, wow. WFTV has has announced uh, that there are plans um, and permits filed for Super Nintendo World at uh, Universal Studios Florida. Construction will begin in 2018. It's project number 487. And it sounds like uh, Chip S is saying that it's going to be a uh, Mario Lands and a uh, Mario Land and a Donkey Kong Land. Donkey Kong Land is huge, by the way, so that definitely means it's going to have a coaster in it. And they're estimating three years of construction. So, Banks, any thoughts on that? Besides, well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I feel like we've all known this for for a little bit now, it's, but it's good to finally see official permits uh, being filed and. That were finally right around the corner from construction starting, and now it's just a waiting game on when they're going to announce uh, the closure of that whole kid zone area. So mm-hmm. I probably should go take my daughter out there one last time because she she really loves that Barney show and she loves the Barney playground. And so that I mean I'm excited for the future and I'm like bulldoze Barney, get it out of there. But on a personal family level, level i'm a little saddened by you know one of her favorite things being gone but she won't she won't remember it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh but yeah yeah so i'm very excited uh, the the whole um mario kart ride the donkey kong uh rumored coaster uh mine car ride uh it's it's all very exciting although i felt like i some read somewhere today that Someone was actually saying that this might be in their new prop, new land, but I think that's you know false. I, 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 it's going to go in studios. Yeah, so that was a weirdly worded post article. Um, I had a lot of people saying so they're putting Mario in Islands of Adventure. If you read it, they confirmed that Mario Kart and Donkey Kong and those plans we've known about are going in Studios Park. Mm-hmm. And then they say additional insiders are saying they're working on other Nintendo. Um, the other Nintendo properties in the other um, in, in Islands of Adventure, and then the other park when they build it down the street. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there's so much history with Nintendo, and their library is so massive that this could be like Potter, where it could be at multiple parks. Mm-hmm. And it was just a really weird, weirdly worded article. So yeah. that, that I think that's kind of where the, a lot of the confusion comes from. They just needed the they didn't kind of um, bridge the gap. Uh, mentally quite as well on that. So, But that's kind of the plans. We know it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the big thing is that we know uh, that there's permits filed now. So we're just waiting. I think the closures will probably be January, February, probably after the holiday season's over. Yeah, I think that's a good bet. Uh, they clearly are seeing a lot of people for the Potter stuff, which we'll be getting to in a second. Yes. So, Banks, you did a lot of Christmas stuff recently. Oh, it's been... Lots, lots of Christmas since the beginning of November. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's start off at uh, Walt Disney World. Yes. There's been uh, two Christmas offerings we're going to talk about there. Uh, the Sunset Seasons Greetings, uh, which is in Hollywood Studios. And then uh, what? And you went to a recording of one of the holiday specials. Yes. And there are like three of them this year, you were saying? So yeah, yeah. I'm so, completely yeah. lost now because I, I haven't been paying attention necessarily to all the – all I again, like all I know is tradition. Like, hey, my family puts on the uh, Christmas Day Parade at Disney World right. special, and that's the only one I knew of. And now there's another one that's next week, 
and yeah. then that. So, do you want to just talk about that? And yeah, let's let's talk yeah. about that real quick. Um, so it started last year. This whole three special thing. Um, so the first special is uh, it's a nighttime prime, uh, prim- or they call it a prime time special on ABC. It's usually around or after Thanksgiving. So this this year will be next week. Um, and so that's it's all at night, and it's just basically a bunch of performances. Uh, it's just a musical special. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, kind of to officially start the Christmas season. Um, and then Disney Channel does its own special now that is going to be on Disney Channel, I believe, on December 2nd. But it's also going to be on their Disney Now app starting this week. Um, so they have their own special with their like, Disney Channel performers. And then you have the usual Christmas Day special, um, uh, which really – and it's what I hate the most is that it's really gone away from the parade. And it's just basically – Here's performances and then a little bit of a parade thrown in here and there. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the names are all different. So it's now it's now part of the wonderful world of Disney. The one next week will be called Magical Holiday Celebration. And the one on Christmas Day will be the Magical Christmas Celebration. Okay. And so they film all three of those over a four or five day period uh, uh, here at Walt Disney World. Uh, they did that about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So you saw someone perform at Hollywood Studios. Was it? Yes. Was it in real life? Was it called or? That was, yeah, that's their name in real life. Okay, because uh, I made the great joke that I wish that they were actually on a video screen there, so they weren't in real life. I think the I think the uh, <laughs> I think the irony there would just be way too um, Al- Alanis Morissette. Right. So, uh, no, so, <laughs> so how'd that go? Yeah, it went great. Um, the, I didn't know who In Real Life was until I uh, got there. Apparently, they were the winners of this uh, reality show that was on ABC this past summer called Boy mm-hmm. Band. Okay. Um, that tends um, to be how I learn about all the music now. It's just like, oh, who are they? Oh, okay. Exactly. Um, and and that, that one will air on the Disney Channel special. I was I was in the audience right behind Raven Simone, so you'll probably see me behind her when she's introducing the band. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and yeah, I just did that at Hollywood Studios, and then I, then I left. Hanson performed at the park later that night for the special that I air next week. Um, I didn't get to go to any of the nighttime uh, taping, so um, I, I just pay, basically did all the Christmas Day uh, special tapings. Um, but it, it's, it's nice. I, I will say that's one positive thing to me about these specials, is that they, they don't just stay at Magic Kingdom. They, they go all to all the parks and showcase performances at all the different parks. Uh, I mean, it's synergy. They got to promote the whole thing um and they also have performances that'll be out disneyland that they shot already uh so did that and then i spent a couple days uh at magic kingdom for the castle performances where i saw 98 degrees uh and fits in the tantrums um and oh nice yeah no that was great that's a band i know (laughs) yeah i know (laughs) Um, and, and it was Creel's kind of fun behind, between takes. They were playing the hand clap song. Um, I think they're actually performing that for the special that's next week. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's I missed last year's taping. Um, I've been going every year since uh, 2007, mm-hmm. but I missed last year because I was out of town when it filmed. Um, and last year's special really kind of uh, I lost faith in it last year because I, I've been watching this my whole life, like since 88, 89. It's been an annual tradition for me, and I've loved it ever since. And it's over the year, over the past few years, where it's kind of gone away from that parade and it's just performances. And it's just kind of, it, it, I've lost my faith in it. But after missing last year's taping and then going back to the taping again this year, I realized that it really helps for me to actually go to the taping because then I, I'm able to enjoy mm-hmm. it and I know what I'm getting into now when the. Uh, the special airs so so yeah I'll, I'll still be there watching it christmas day with with my daughter and trying trying to continue a new family tradition with with her and i'd love to be able to take her to a taping uh next year if she's ready for it so so yeah i think i heard some did someone else come in hey banks it's lane hey, <laughs> yay lane time i was gonna say i love that special so so much the christmas morning one and i agree it has gone away from it but about uh 15 seconds every other year you'll get concept art you haven't seen or something that like exactly. real parks nerds can love yeah and or like you know now they do stuff for everything so you're like okay here we're on a cruise in norway or now we're at alani it's like oh disney i would like to do that i, I the last good year to, to me the last good year was when neil patrick harris hosted in 2013 that was a great year the opening number was phenomenal um it was a lot of fun to be at um I, mean, I miss when, you know, I know they have to promote all the parks and that's understandable. It's it's a business. And, and plus, you know, 
when I was a kid, that was my only way of seeing what was going on because this was before the internet. So I, I want to see what's going on at all the parks. But it was cool because the way they used to do it was with the parades. They'd bring the parades in from the other parks, and that would be their way of promoting. Oh, you go make sure you go over to to, uh, to Animal Kingdom and see Jingle Jungle, uh, and they have those floats on Main Street. So that was always a fun a fun deal. Mm-hmm. Jingle Jungle is a Jingle Jungle time. <laughs> I miss that parade. So good. Yeah. So. That's my that's my t- time at the taping this year. So you know, feel free to tune in, but it's you know it's, it's just remember it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah, right. or maybe it's just we're older. That too. That's it, it. Might just be that that you know that they're trying to turn it to kids that watch YouTube videos as their entertainment, not longer parades yeah. or longer shows. And these are the people that eight to ten year old kids would know and go, hey, let's go see that. And I Let's know that's I know that's what my kid's going to enjoy. My, I know this is what is going to be geared toward my kid, and I'm okay with that. I mean, this is this is for her now. Like I grew up with my time when it was live with Regis, and and I had I had a <laughs> great memories with that. And so now you know my daughter will have her own memories for this version of it, and I can show her old tapes of the of the the old versions. I remember uh, watching the Christmas Day parade at my grandparents' house once, and uh, they were showing Splash Tacular, just to give you yes. an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have I have videos on my personal YouTube channel. Uh, the grand opening of Splash Mountain from the special. They had a Regis was previewing the Tower of Terror, uh, like an alien encounter. So like you can go to my personal YouTube channel and, and find those. Those are a lot of fun to watch. That's Jeez, incredible. No, That's what I'm gonna do Christmas Day. Just watch Banks' YouTube channel. <laughs> Hi, it's Regis here. You know, and like, ah, oh, man, those Regis. are the, ah, oh, those are good. He'd always be like, I'm out of control. <laughs> um, I'm so surprised he made the minimum high requirements to get on Tower of Terror. Too soon. No, what, what? What do you mean too soon? Yeah, no, that's that's a short joke. We can do that. So, Banks, do you want to talk about the Sunset Seasons greetings at Disney's what? Hollywood Studios? What? Uh, all right. So first, I'm just going to say nothing is ever going to beat or replace Osborne that that nothing will ever be like that but and I had my trepidations going into this um, do you want to explain what it is because it sounds like Lane has no idea what we're talking about nope, yeah, I'm yeah, so entirely entirely uh, clean going into this one interesting okay so basically Sunset Seasons Greetings is a new uh, offering it's on Sunset Boulevard and what it is is they have special little mini shows that happen with via projections on the Tower of Terror and there's four different shows, and they each tell a different little fun story. So one involves, like, Mickey's Christmas Carol. One has uh, Toy Story. One has the Muppets. And then one is Frozen. And so they tell just little vignettes, and then they transform the tower in these fun little scenes that have to do with the intro video that I played. So, like, uh, the best one to me was the Muppets. They had the Swedish chef making and destroying a gingerbread house, and then the tower turns into a gingerbread house. Um, so... I had it sounds tri- amazing. It, it it really is, and I I will say I'm going to admit when I when they first announced this and showed concept art, I was a little worried. I, I became you know an internet person, uh, and I was like, how dare <laughs> they touch my tower? Like this is stupid. Like like you can't put colorful holiday stuff on Tower of Terror. It defeats the whole purpose. Mm-hmm. But when I went and saw it in person, I was like, you know what? Why do I why do I even doubt Disney anymore? Like they are top notch in their projections, and it it. it it just turns the tower into it's beautiful and it's really cool to see see all the animation on it and they also sync up the the stars that are on sunset they sync those up to to the lights to change and go with the music and and the cute little videos that they have on these new digital billboards they installed and it's it's really it's it like i said at the beginning it's nothing will replace osborne but i think it's a nice new holiday tradition for that park that desperately needs some needed some new holiday stuff this year cool lane do you have any questions no i think it sounds wonderful like give me that like i I like projections because tower of terror doesn't change it's not any less tower of terror yeah but if you're going to give me a five ten minute show perfectly done that somebody you know they they did every inch of that thing and then put it in the computer and then used good digital graphics to make it all right like I, I think that sounds like a wonderful thing. And, I, and uh, when they when they do the Toy Story scene, the sign, the Hollywood Tower Hotel sign, turn changes into the Hollywood Toy Hotel. No, see that stuff's cu- that's just cute. Like that's fun. My favorite thing to think about now is that 
this show's going on. Kids are going to look up. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty. Mommy, I want to go on that. And then they are in a rude, for, or rude awakening. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, but yeah, it's, it's a nice, uh, I think it's a nice new offering. Um, and then the, they added decor around Echo Lake, which is just gorgeous because it's very classic Christmas. Like, there's no Disney characters. It's very much like Santa, reindeers. The Christmas tree is there in the middle of Echo Lake. And then Gertie's got a Santa hat on. It's like the perfect little holiday uh themed area now and it, it's it's now probably one of my favorite areas to watch jingle bell jingle bam because if you stand on the other side by gertie and with the tree there and you get all of the the fireworks it's, it's a really beautiful angle they're still doing yeah. jingle bell jingle bam they are um huh. and let me let me say they plussed it this year um mm-hmm. last year i was not very impressed by it um i mean uh, the projections are always like i've said the projections are top notch and they, they did a great job with that but there was a lot of there wasn't a lot of BAM last year, and this year, boy, would you they, say it was a lowercase BAM last year? I would say it was a lowercase BAM last okay. year. Okay, but this year they earned that uppercase BAM. Oh, okay. <laughs> they they really plussed on on the fireworks, and there's like perimeter fireworks now, and like they they knew like a lot of people were complaining about the lack of fireworks last year, and they did something about it, and I'm very impressed that they actually did that. And happy they did that because now it's a show that I wouldn't mind stopping and watching when I'm at the park. Nice. This is high praise. This makes yeah. me want to go to the studios during a crowded time, which is usually a no-no for me. <laughs> yeah, look, look, right, right now it's hard to defend studios with everything going on. Um, and I think but with everything they've done this year for the holidays, it it needs – holidays at studios this year needs to be experienced at least once. It makes sense as a local to go for these shows. It's- it, it makes a lot of sense for y'all to be like, hey, we'll go to Epcot, we'll get some food, and then we'll walk over studios and go watch these shows. And that, that sounds like a good afternoon. It is. Yeah. It, it's – yeah. All of Disney – yeah, you know what? Actually, that is a perfect – start at Epcot, go to studios. That is a great night. I might do that. Or some of the boardwalk stuff and then make it over there because it's just so easy. Like the studios is better if you think of it as just an extension of the walk from Epcot. Yeah, if you, if you really pair it with Beach Club or pair it with Boardwalk or pair it with one of the um, Swan restaurants, like it gets a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And then for Star Wars fans, they're all they're running both Jingle Bell and Star Wars this uh, the same night every mm-hmm. night, so you don't have to miss the Star Wars show because they're doing a holiday show, so you can see both. Cool. Uh, anything else at Disney World Banks? Anything new uh, or anything you want to touch on? Um. I guess not really much. Oh, I mean, uh, Epcot has submitted itself as a festival park now because they changed the name of their holiday offering. Oh, boy. You, you saw that, right? No, I did not. Okay, so it's always been holidays around the world, but this year it is now the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. Oh, boy. So it's going to be – it's the exact same events. They just changed the name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, there's still the storytellers around the countries. There's still candlelight. There's still the illuminations tag. It's just now that's four festivals. It's pretty much nonstop festivals now. Is there food and drink offerings? Yeah, there are some food and drink offerings. Um, mm-hmm. You know, not of course not as much as like food and wine or flower and garden, but they do have their own specialty offerings for for that festival. Mm-hmm. Oakley, Oakley. Uh, Lane, you got any questions? No, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> I just right. want to go to Epcot now. Lane, our internal optimist. Um, uh, so let's head over to Universal Orlando because they just redid all of their uh, Christmas <laughs> offerings. Oh, so, did I, I? I'm going to pitch in because I didn't get to pitch in on Nintendo stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, this is going to be awesome, you guys. Um, it, yeah. <laughs> the Thunder's coming, and they're using the playbook they use for Potter, where you sprinkle them into each park, and that way. If you like something, you have to go for a few days. And if you don't necessarily like that IP, then there's still other stuff at each park to go to. Mm-hmm. I love it. Universal, do your thing. Okay, let's talk about Christmas. Sweet. So, Banks, what do you want yeah. to start with? Uh, let's start, uh, start with the first thing that I saw, and that was the, uh, the new Universal Holiday Parade. Okay. So I was very impressed by this parade. I, I've always loved their holiday parade because I've, I'm, I, I – I love the Macy's Parade. It's, it's always an annual tradition to, to watch the Thanksgiving Parade, and I've always loved being able to always see the floats as they come down here. So I was kind of like worried how much of the Macy's they were going to take out of it to bring in the Universal stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was very 
blown away and very pleasantly surprised by how much it is an excellent mix of Universal and Macy's. So the the balloons, even though the balloons may be Universal characters like a minion, they're still they were still made by Macy's. So they are official Macy's balloons, and you can only see them at Universal. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that was awesome. The the, the the floats themselves are so beautiful and, and detailed. There's so much to look at for each one. Um, for if you don't know, there's there's three sections or four sections. You have uh, minions, you have um, Madagascar, you have Shrek, and then you have Santa Claus at the end. Um, and yeah, it's like each detail for each section uh, on the floats. They're great. There's some characters like they've brought in new characters that have never been to the park. Like like Lucy from Despicable Me is there now. They have mm-hmm. three blind mice from. From mm-hmm. Shrek, that are part of it. Um, one of the balloons is a Dronky, the 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 donkey dragon baby. Um, so it's it's. I would say the one thing I don't like about this parade is the choice of soundtrack. You're not um, the first person to say that. The the so the uh, the overarching underliner of it is a bit slow um, and, and kind of uh, not as high energy as the past parade was mm-hmm. uh, when you get to like the, the, the sections and each section has its own like version of a holiday song, then you, it picks up and it's really nice. And the, those versions of these songs that the characters sing are really cool. But then in between when it goes back to the underlie underliner, it's a bit, it gets back to a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it just was a little, a little bit more high energy to it. Mm hmm. But other than that, like uh, Universal did an excellent update for their parade, and it, it pretty much is an all new parade, and I'm I'm very happy with it, and it's 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 still an awesome length, like it's like twenty twenty five minutes long. Um, there's confetti that flies down in each section. Santa stops and lights the tree. Um, the one I will say another downside is there's no more um, rocket dancers. Ah, oh. they took them out. <laughs> Darn. So that that was that was sad, but but other than that, like it, all of the good outweighs the bad to me, and it's definitely something that you're gonna want want to go and, and check out because yeah, you haven't seen this parade; it's, it's practically brand new, mm-hmm. and it looks Disney level, like the quality of the parade because Disney's always oh done fantastic parades, and Universal's done a mixed bag of parades <laughs> to say yeah. the least. I know I saw saw someone say that it kind of feels like a Christmas version of their of their daytime parade, mm-hmm. and I can kind of agree with that because it's you know the different sections of of characters, but it's it's still it's I feel it's better than the daytime parade to me. To me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's definitely something I want to go see again, uh, and I suggest everyone go see it. Cool, uh, Lane. Got any questions? Nope. Alrighty then. So we might as well get into the big ones now, the big guns. Yes. Let's talk about uh, Christmas in the Wizarding World. Oh, I'm so glad they finally did this. <laughs> it is about time they brought some kind of special event to the Wizarding World. Uh, after seeing like Japan do like Halloween and Christmas already, I'm, I'm like, when do we get this stuff? And now we got this stuff, and it has been worth the wait. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to talk about the crowds because that's a given. Like those areas are always condensed anyway, so you can get kind of crowded in there. And, and just know you will deal with shoulder to shoulder people at some point. But just talking about the offerings themselves, it's the, the the decorations are very they're minimal, but they're but they work perfectly. Like it's just a bunch of like garland and stuff like that, and with lights in them. But it, it fits in well. It really now feels, especially in Hogsmeade, it really now sells the idea of the snow on the buildings and and it's just oh i love it i I really love it i'm so glad that they're doing it both here and in hollywood um and yeah i'm just i'm it's christmas all around universal now it's no longer just a parade in grinchmas now you got other things happening at the wizarding world so it really helps spread the crowds out as well Mm -hmm. cool um so what do you think of the new projection show, The Magic Chris- of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle? So, yeah. Um, th- it, I don't know who does these projections, but Disney and, – and I can now – I'm now putting Universal up on level with Disney in terms of projections because good lord. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, it, it's just so it, – it, it blends into that – 
to Hogwarts Castle and the and the mountainside so well. And it's as soon as you walk up, the projection's already on and showcasing a snowy castle and all that sort of stuff. And it just you you turn that corner, and I haven't hadn't felt that feeling of awe since the the first time I ever walked into Hogsmeade like seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Like you see that projection for the first time in person, and you're just like frozen, like wow, holy moly! And then when the show happens. It's a it's like an eight minute show, and they do these cool little scenes. I, I will say, that if you haven't seen the videos of the show yet, the show it starts off, um, it, it starts off a little slow. Um, they have like ghosts coming in and out of the castle and the rock work singing some kind of uh, Christmas carol, and it feels it, it, like the first time I was watching it, I'm kind of like, this feels very H H N esque with these ghosts and this haunting musical <laughs> carol they're singing, and I'm like. This would have fit in really well at Halloween, but once it gets going, it gets going, and the scenes they're not they, they don't last too long. It kind of moves, and the visuals are just gorgeous. The whole the the score uh, we found out from Iello at the media event that um, though the, you know the scores are the familiar melodies we know from the movies, the entire score was re-recorded just for this show. Mm-hmm. So they had they had a band in London uh, or an orchestra, I should say. Uh, re-record all these uh, orchestrations just for this show, and it's uh, yeah, the the ending gives you chills. That that, that just oh. the, the Potter music always gives me chills, and adding it to the visuals of, of the projections uh, is just it's beautiful. And I, I think I, lo- I I love that they are running this continuously, so it's not like set show times where you have to go get a spot. It's just happening over and over again from dusk until park close. So if you if you miss it when it starts, just head on in ten, ten minutes later. I'm sure you'll see it again. Mm-hmm. Nice, um, Lane. Any questions? Was I <laughs> again? No, I just like want to go to these things. Like, <laughs> this is it's just a huge tease that I plan my trips for January and February, and I don't get to go to this wonderful Christmas time. Dude, Christmas in Orlando is my favorite time. Christmas in general has always been my favorite time of year since I was a kid, but especially here in Orlando because all the parks do christmas and their two own months day. too yeah exactly and like, each part like disney universal sea world they have their own events and they all are just so beautiful and it's always just such an amazing time to go to everywhere and see everything because you're not going to see the same thing at all the parks it's it's just excellent i can't i know sea world starting this weekend and i can't wait to go to that because i love that sea world christmas event mm-hmm. yeah i was wondering when sea worlds was starting up so yeah, they're always the one that starts the latest, but yeah, they're they're getting ready to start up. Awesome. So I guess uh, the next thing we can cover are the two new shows. Well, I guess the two new shows. Yeah, I would call them new shows. Yeah, um, I'd say new shows. Um, let's do Frog Choir first because it's the Frog Choir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a general. You know, you've seen the Frog Choir perform, and now they're performing Christmas tunes. I mean, um, it's it's still worth it to go see it because. Um, Three of the songs they sing were written uh, especially for the Frog Choir, so they're like brand new, as Mike Aiello called them, canon Christmas songs to the Wizarding World. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they sing their own rendition of We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And so it's just, you know, it's the Frog Choir. You know, they have fun. Yeah. And then the big one, and everyone's yes. favorite, uh-huh. is Celestina Warbeck. Yes. Uh-huh. How is that show? Uh, so fun. Uh, I love Celestina. It's... Celsius is always someone I can go and watch many, many times and have have a blast every single time. Um, and, and this Christmas show just knocks it, it, it out of the park. It's 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 so good. The songs are very catchy. Like I was humming them when I was leaving the park that night. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my favorite song was uh, "My Baby Gave Me a Hippogriff for Christmas." Ah, uh, and it's just <laughs> it's, it's so fun. Like and Celestina just has this way of performing in her banshees and and it's just uh so good like i think i prefer celestina over the frog choir um but they're both they're both fun but celestina is just a blast um and it snows a couple times of course it's all you can have snope but um yeah four four original songs for celestina uh all canon apparently and yeah i mean there's not much else to say just go go watch the videos and, and just hear those songs they're so freaking catchy I want to. I want them to like release like a album on iTunes of all of Celestina's songs. Mm-hmm. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> I feel that would sell, or even a CD in the. Or, I mean, I guess CDs don't really 
are, are big anymore. But I, I, I can only play a CD in my car nowadays. <laughs> yeah, same, exactly. So yeah, they should really like think about putting Celestina albums on iTunes because I, I bet you they would sell pretty well. Yeah, put on Spotify or Apple Music or something. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. So I guess there's – well, I guess is there anything else – at Universal Orlando, you want to cover? I mean, they're still doing Grinchmas, they're still doing the Blues Brothers, they're still doing, yeah, um, we, uh, Trans Siberian Orchestra. I didn't see any of those because because the, the media event they invited us to was just specifically for all the new stuff. But yeah, all this, all the classic Universal holiday stuff is still mm-hmm. there. Grinchmas is still running. Uh, Mannheim still performing. Oh, Mannheim. Uh, sorry, I thought it was man. I, I always get those two confused for some other yeah, reason. Yeah, I understand. Me too. But yeah, yeah Mannheim uh, is performing, and then you know, Blues Brothers are doing their holiday show. So it just with all the new stuff this year, it really has like Universal has really made itself a Christmas destination now, mm-hmm. big time. Yeah, I'm just hearing a lot of people who are like, "Oh, I want to, I want to go, I want to re up my pass, all that stuff." So yeah, they're doing well. <laughs> uh, we'll see how this is. Yeah. So we have one last thing that you did yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you went to Gaylord Palms for all their Christmas stuff, so I've never done this. So do you kind of want to walk us through what they offer and all that stuff? Yeah. So I've, I've done this now, I think, five, six years in a row, and it's always it's always one of those sleeper hits that not many people know about, but everyone should go and experience because Gaylord, like, really has a unique Christmas offering. And they the, this year they've plussed it. Uh, from past years, but adding a few more little things to really make it a, a, a great um, Christmas destination, I should say. And, you, and the, the best thing is you don't have to be staying at the resort. Um, you, you can park there. You have, obviously, you have to pay for parking, but um, you can just go and enjoy a day at the resort and do all these uh, Christmas activities and then leave that night. You don't have to stay there to enjoy it all. And that's, I think, was very smart of them to do that um, because it's a huge hotel. Um they have uh, a show called Cirque Dreams Unwrapped, and it's a uh, it's a Cirque show, not Cirque du Soleil. It's a different company, but they mm-hmm. they do high wire acts and, and and things like that. That is very impressive. The the show this year is completely new, uh, the, the, from what they did the past couple of years. Uh, you'll see video of it on our show this week. Uh, not not this week, but next week. Um, it, you know, just your, your standard um, kind of high wire circus kind of acts, but it's a lot of fun. Um, they have a, a giant Christmas tree in the atrium that does a little like five, six minute light show. Um, this year, new this year, they have a, a, a small little Christmas tree trail that you can walk through uh, because the theme this year for Christmas at Gaylord Palms is Christmas around the world. So their tree trail has uh, trees that represent different countries around the world. And then, of course, the big thing that everyone knows that Gaylord Palms Christmas to be is their ice display. Mm-hmm. Um, the oh my gosh, it's always so. And I think the one thing I love about ice is that every year the theme changes, so it's, you don't have to worry about going back and you're seeing the same thing again. It's always completely different. Like these artisans from China come in a couple months before the exhibit starts, and they start carving the ice, and they they get it done pretty quickly, and it's. Uh, uh, it's it's just gorgeous. This year, as I said, it's Christmas around the world, so all the displays showcase these ice sculptures with different traditions that the countries do. They have ice. Uh, they have a giant five lane ice slide in the middle of the display that you can sit down and slide down the ice. Yeah, I saw the video you guys posted of that. Yeah, that's always fun. There's always there will always be an ice slide. That's that's a staple of the, the ice display, and then. Um, and then, of course, they have like activities like snow tubing, and they have like story time with Mrs. Claus. There's a Santa meet and greet, um, and then they also offer uh, breakfast with Charlie Brown and friends uh, for hotel guests. So that's like I think that's one thing that hotel guests will get is they can book the breakfast package for the mm-hmm. next morning. But yeah, like it's always yeah, it's always one of those things where people. I'm surprised how many people don't know that ice exists because it's not at a theme park. It's at a random, like big, you know, it's, it's a big resort, but it's still just a random resort right off Disney property. So it's always surprising to me when I say, Oh, you know, show these pictures of ice. Like, Oh my God, you know, that existed. And yeah, it's like, yeah, you got to check this out. If you ever get a chance, because it's, it's a gorgeous display dress warm though, because it is nine degrees inside. Um, they do provide big coats though for you to, to wear. Um, yeah. If you didn't know, all the Gaylord resorts around the country do their own their ice displays. So I think there's like a Gaylord in Washington D.C. There's one in Texas, 
and I think there's one more, and every, all the Gaylords do ice, and each Gaylord has a different theme for their ice display. So there might be one closer to you than Orlando that you can go check out, and if you can, definitely do it, because there, it's just always so beautiful what, what someone can do with a block of ice. Cool. Uh, Lane, any questions? I've been to the one in Nashville, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah, Nashville, that's what I was thinking of, yeah. It's huge. It's like thirty minutes out of town, but it's it's big and wonderful, and you could about stay the whole weekend like it was a like it was a Vegas hotel. Yeah, yeah, you could you could stay at Gaylord Palms like 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 I said like a whole weekend, not leave, and feel like you have, still haven't seen everything. Like there's really a lot in in this hotel. Sweet, awesome. Yeah, uh, I guess that's all we have for this episode. It was it was a quick one. Um, it was not a, a lot qu- of news drops in uh, December. Yeah, well, I mean, Banks, what are your thoughts on the hotel announcements from Universal? I mean, I mean, I'm excited. It's, it's nice to see Universal um, expanding. Um, we've kind of known about these two hotels for a little bit now, but it's nice to know that it's finally official. Um, so I'd like to you know, to know a name, and, and I'm sure that I, I'm assuming that it's kind of like a beach type theme to it. They'll, they'll just be the Bay Bay and the other Bay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can only use the term Bay in their uh, hotels now. This is true. They're locked in. But I'm just the, the one thing I'm curious about with those hotels is transportation because obviously it's across I four from the resort. So is it only going to be bus transportation? Or are they going to let guests walk over the over the bridge to Universal? Like I'm just curious how how that's going to go because if it's only bus, then that's the lines are going to be long to get over there. So they, it'll they probably really, be buses, and they'll probably throw so many buses at it. Yeah, they're, they're going to need I, – I really think they need one more mode of transportation somehow to get guests over there because, yeah, even if you throw a lot of buses that way, it, it'll cause traffic and it'll cause lines to get on the buses. Because mm-hmm. that intersection of I-Drive and Universal Boulevard can – even now can get pretty backed up. Yeah, and that's not even crossing. I remember I took the bus when me and Sean did Volcano Bay for Horror Nights weekend, and that was probably a 10- or 15-minute trip mm-hmm. to only go under one little bridge. It was like – so I, I can't imagine if you have to go that much further, yeah. it's going to be a 45-minute commute from the time you sit in the bus to the time you are you get up and get to the parks. It'll be interesting to see how, how Universal will do that. we got a couple of years to, to, for them to figure it out, but that, that's definitely my biggest thought uh, on the whole location for the hotels. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I want to quickly ask you guys something. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's been a, about a month or so since they made the – new announcements about the details for Fast and Furious. Mm-hmm. What are y'all thinking about in terms of the 3D? Do you think there's going to be 3D? I think it's dead. I, th- I think this is kind of the first sign that they're recognizing and acknowledging that, hey, we've hit, uh, we've hit mass. We've hit critical, yeah. critical mass with 3D. So I think, I, I think it showed with Universal Studio Hollywood's uh, Forbidden Journey removing it, and I think this is another sign um, that it's just kind of overstate its welcome in a way so i think i think that's kind of the sign on that personally that's how i read it you gotta do something different you gotta you gotta zig when everybody else is zagging and universal has done 3d glasses 3d glasses and everybody you talk to even people that like a universal weekend universal trip as a family they go man there's some fatigue of those glasses yeah yeah every ride it just feels like you're putting them on and having one and, and you know you're making movie rides so you have to have screens to make a movie ride. Yeah. And I, you just have to have some that aren't, some that aren't, if you're going to have that many screens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's just something I noticed, like when I was reading the press release and, and reading all the details and like seeing the concept art, and I'm like, they didn't mention once or show in the concept art once any 3d glasses. Also so, how like 3d is not that cool anymore. The fact that every single time you go to the movies, you can pay your 1450 and it can be in 3D. It's not a novel thing on vacation. Yeah. Now, I don't even go to movies in 3D anymore. Um, yeah. I, I literally just in the mail today got my movie pass, and I'm definitely going to be using that a lot, and all for my non, non, all for non-3D movies. Like, I really feel like the 3D gimmicks kind of lost its luster. And I mean, even Dis- Disney's acknowledging that, too, because the Mickey and Minnie ride is going to not have 3D. Wow, that's going to be fun. Like, inventing this new type of 2.5D, as they called it. So I'm definitely excited to see the parks moving away from 3D. Um, but I'm just curious, because I've done Fast and Furious uh, Supercharged on the Hollywood tour, and it's mm-hmm. in 3D. So I'm curious on how they're going to – are they just going to turn the 3D off, or do they have to redo the graphics to make it look better on a flat screen? Like, I'm just curious how they're 
handling the non 3D for something that was already made for 3D. I think they're re-rendering the video because it makes sense that they should, but I don't yeah. know if they're making that many changes to it. Um, no. Because they already filmed the content, correct? Yeah. Did they filmed the content when they were filming the last movie? Yeah, they, the, all the stuff that's in the ride film, they, they filmed that back uh, when they were filming either when or after they filmed Seven um, because they filmed it for Hollywood first. Um, and I did some side-by-side comparison because the, the behind-the-scenes video <clears throat> that Universal Radio released showed some mm-hmm. some ride film in it. And so I did some side-by-side comparison of the Hollywood version, and really it's the exact same. The only thing that changed was the the color of the sky. Like the Hollywood one is blue skies, but it looks like they made ours at either sunset or, or, or sunrise. So it's like an orange sky. So that's the only difference that I found. Um, I think like when they said like the new characters like Tej and, and, and I don't know the other character's name, um, uh, forgive me for that, but I think they'll be in like the queue or the pre-show, but the ride film will stay unchanged except for maybe a couple of little touch-ups. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the new people in the attraction are going to be in the uh, uh, some of the prior show scenes or the something like that. Q stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just something layering. like that. Yeah. You know the funny story about them filming the next one? Uh, they no. They take a year off because of The Rock and then Tyrese pitched a fit. Yeah. That's hilarious. It'll be fun. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that when they do the grand opening for, uh, for Supercharged here that they bring Dwayne Johnson in. Mm-hmm. Um, because he was there for the grand opening of Disaster, so it'd be kind of. A yeah, I remember that. <laughs> sort of thing to have him back for the grand opening of the ride that replaced his previous ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing that when uh, he was not as big a star, and he came out for Disaster's opening, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that would be kind of funny if they do that. Although I don't know, maybe I, I don't know. I mean, like wrestling's in Orlando, so it shouldn't be that hard to get him out. No, I don't think so. And he he was already came out for for the Jimmy Fallon tapings when his ride opened up. So oh yeah, good point. Sure it won't be that hard to get him get him down here. Yeah, it's sort of like getting the Phelps twins to Orlando. <laughs> oh, it's easy. Hey, you want ten grand and a free dinner? Yep. Okay. See y'all there. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh what's going on? A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff's going on. Yeah, we're like. Joe, you, you got know. any trips? Thanks. You got any trips? I don't have any I'll, trips planned right now. I'm just going to go see the Dayton Flyers play this coming weekend. That'll be good. Yeah, thanks, go you Flyers. Any, uh, thanks. I ha- you're a roller coaster guy too, right? Yeah, yeah. I love I love. What, uh, uh, what do you think about the 2018 lineup coming in? There's a lot of good stuff coming in. Um, I'm really very excited for Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. Mm-hmm. Um, Silver Dollar City was a park that I grew up going to. Um, so, And I haven't been in well over a decade since I moved to Orlando. So... I, I'm really contemplating. I, I'm, I'm very close to pulling the trigger and, and just booking a trip for the grand opening of that because I want to go and cover that and, and go back and visit the park again. Do uh, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much – yeah, I might do it. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to that ride. Um, the – God, what – so much is – what's going on? Is they released the uh, – They were. this is a little news because Parks Group doesn't always talk roller coasters, but I like them. Uh, they opened. They released the ride cars at IAPA. Yeah, I was there. Time yeah. Traveler. Mm-hmm. And boy, are those awesome! Yeah. Oh my God. Like that's one of the things I love about IAPA. I love going every year. I love seeing the coaster car reveals. And I, I saw the Time Traveler one. I saw the Infinity Falls raft. I saw the uh, the Oscars Wacky Taxi ra- uh, train oh, car. That ride's uh, gonna be amazing. I can't, I'm looking forward to that one. That that looks like a fun little coaster. Um, uh, and then yeah, like just. Uh, so much going on in IAPA. Like, I, that could be a whole other episode to talk about that. But, yeah, I, I, I will say I am really looking forward to Infinity Falls. I think that'll be a – I think that's going to be a good a good fit for SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll be like a crowd. Like, it'll, it'll draw the crowds they need, but it definitely will get them people into the park, uh, I'm hoping. They just need to keep building rides. Yes, yes. Keep building rides. And even if you don't – like, even if they don't – find their juggernaut in the next four or five years, if they keep building good, uh, you know, medium, good level rides, then there'll be enough. And like y'all locals will go if the lines aren't bad and it's fun and you can go with your family. The sea world's always been my, one of my favorite places to have an annual pass at because it's always a great deal. 
and they always have great offers for pass holders. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm still going to keep my pass and I'm looking forward to going and riding on this new ride. And, and when they reopen the pass holder lounge, because that pass holder lounge is probably the, the best pass holder offering at any park in Orlando. You get mm-hmm. back massages. I wish that'd be nice. <laughs> free, free Coke freestyle is awesome. Yeah, that's good. I'm jazzed for, uh, for Kings Dominion and Cedar Points. RMC's coming in hot. Oh, my God. I will be getting it both of those. If you don't, please follow Rocky Mountain Construction on Instagram because they're, like, all up in the Kings Dominion uh, Steel Vengeance. And, boy, it's like beautiful. Dude, I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I have yet to be able to go on any sort of RMC coaster. Neither have I. Thing. So that's okay. <laughs> and I really want to because my, my – my true home park, Six Flags Over Texas, has the new Texas Giant that they did, and I really want to ride that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I want to get uh, – you guys need to come up to Cedar Point. Yeah, I'm Cedar definitely Point's coming up. On my bucket list. Mm-hmm. i got to get on that RMC Mean Streak this year because that thing looks absolutely insane. It looks bonkers. <laughs> that, oh, the first drop looks so scary. So mm-hmm. scary. I can't so wait for that a, one. That's what I've been dreaming of roller coaster wise was those two big old RMCs. I could take it or leave it with the Raptor track. Uh, oh, uh, I'm getting an RMC down the street from my house, and they revealed the cars, and they look like Verbolton cars for the oh, old which Cyclone. Did it cut out? Banks. Yeah, we're getting an RMC Wicked Cyclone. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did see someone saying that it looked like Verbolton 2.0. It was the same. But Verbolton's cars are wonderful, and I like cars, and it's a good spot to put cars in um, that park. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm excited for roller coasters next year. Not a lot to talk about. We'll talk about them more when they come up. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Please go to the media day in Missouri. If I, and, if I uh, can, I will. Like, uh, I, yeah, if, if they invite us out there and if, if I can maybe sweet talk them into like putting us up at a hotel or something, then I'll pay for my flight and I will go there. Listen, if the ride this one guys can get an invite, you can get one too. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it, it was um, – yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure we can. I, we have our contacts there. We, I can talk to them. Yeah, and if you need a reporter for uh, attractions at Cedar Point, I'm always here. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you have a, if you do you have a, a good mic? Uh, we can make it happen, Banks. We can make, we can make, it, make it, happen. it happen. If you can get a mic, dude, I would. I, you're the first person I'm going to call because we want Cedar Point coverage. I want Cedar Point coverage on the show. Sounds good. So I we, we'll wait. We'll, we'll 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 make this work. Okay, that sounds good. We're making deals here. We're cutting deals live on air. You heard it right here. Yes. Wow. Yeah, we're live. We're doing this live. We're signing contracts. Well, close (laughs) her out? Yeah, I think we can close her out. Banks, where can we find you online at? Uh, You can find me uh, work-wise on Twitter at Attractions, YouTube uh, Attractions Magazine. Our show comes out every Thursday on the YouTube channel there. Um, Facebook Attractions Magazine as well. And then personally, I'm on Twitter at Banks Lee, Instagram at Disney Goofball, and then Facebook Banks Lee as well. What about your YouTube channel so we can watch all the crazy old stuff? Oh, uh, that's just uh, Banks Lee. So you should be able to just search for Banks Lee. Uh, and you'll, you, I should, one of my videos should pop up at the front, at the top there. Nice. Lane, where can we find you at? I'm at, at Parkscope Lane on the Twitters. Y'all go watch Banks' stuff on YouTube and Facebook. It's very fun and very friendly. Um, it's a good dose for people that don't live in town to get your afternoon Orlando-ness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can find me at Parkscope Joe. You can find all of us at Parkscope and Parkscope.net. Uh, Jeff's been doing the YouTube Tuesdays. We got some good videos up. We just posted a podcast um, with Lane and Alan, and you talk. And Lane, you talk about your craziness in um, Europe, in Europe, and going to in Orlando. At, yeah, a little bit of Orlando, but I mean, the the cool stuff's Efteling and Oktoberfest. Yeah. So that's the stuff you want to listen to. So that one went up um, on Monday. Uh, we're recording this one early. I think we're trying to get this one up on Black Friday or Saturday or something like that. Uh, just so we have some spacing for the episodes and people have stuff to listen to over the holidays. So on behalf of everyone, thank you for listening. Uh, go give us a nice review. Lane, do you want to lead us out? Love everybody. Hate everything. Congo There we go. <laughs>